God bless you. Welcome to uh, our Tuesday evening pastoral Bible study. And I am always humbled to be in your presence and thank God for giving us the privilege to be here and participate one with another one more time. It is so good to be here. I want to give a shout out to uh, my wife, Jessica. She's doing wonderful. I'm so proud of the progress that she's making physically and she's always been uh, an image of faith and serenity. So bless you, dear. I'll continue to pray for you. And uh, I want Mother Cooper to know that we miss you. We're praying for you. Mother Hollinsworth, we miss you, baby. And Deb, thank you for taking care of her. Mother Ruth Davis, God bless you, baby. We're praying for you that the Lord will just strengthen you. And Mother Ruth Garrett, God bless you. Um, Mother Spivey, uh, God bless you, Mom. You take care of yourself. We love you. And uh, shout out to Mother Mildred Hall, who I haven't seen in a while. I, I miss you and praying for you and pray that everything is going well for you and that you're being built up and being strengthened in the Lord. And for all of uh, the men of our congregation, brothers, thank you so much for your fellowship. Thank you for for helping me uh, in ministry, for loving your wives, for taking care of your children, for being Christians uh, in this time that we live. And I honor you and I thank God for you. To all of uh, the leadership of our church, if you are member of our diaconate council, you know, that's our minister, deacons, and elders. Thank you so much for your help. So grateful to have the, uh, the presence, assistance, and support of uh, Pastor Joseph uh, being here in, in Seattle with us and looking forward to what these uh, next few months are gonna be bringing as we usher in um, a, uh, a revitalized program of worship services and emphasis to um, Generations uh, Z and all those things that are uh, millennials, young people, young adults, and praying that God will continue to, to strengthen your hearts and build you up. And I want to thank God for Sister Tiffany Diggs and uh, our children's director who hasn't had access to children during the pandemic. But Tiffany, thank you so much for picking up the gavel and for sharing in our early morning worship service devotionals. Uh, you blessed me along with Mindy and Brenda, Sister Lanny, um, Deacon uh, Hammond, bless you, man. Thank you so much for sharing in. And all of you who do so much at so many different levels, uh, my son Austin uh, for his uh, uh, media, contribution on a weekly basis. Our worship ministries and ushers and greeters, our medical team, we just, we have a wonderful fellowship. I, I'm blessed. I, that, now there may be a lot of churches uh, in the world, and they are, but for me, this is the best one I know, so. <laughs> and I hope every pastor feels that way about what God has planted him and caused him or her to serve and to be uh, in ministry at this time, but you are great people, Tabernacle. Thank God for you. For all of those who are associated with us through blood or by faith, hey, bless you. To all of my sisters, all four of y'all, uh, Louise and to Sarah and to Glenda and Velma, I want to call them by their play names, but since I'm uh, live and, and, and recording this, I, I better say their proper names. I love y'all. To all of my nieces and, and nephews, cousins. Oh my God, I got some crazy cousins, y'all. I just wanna thank y'all for, for being there for me. Thank you for caring about me, for praying for me as I've been away from your presence for many years, but you've always received me and, and greeted me, so thank you. To all of my classmates, class of 76, Hattiesburg High School, look, if you're watching this, I want you to tell everybody from Hattiesburg High School, class of 1976, if you can get them this message. Ask them to inbox me at pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R, underscore Manaway at Yahoo. Let me hear from y'all, all right? That's pastor, underscore Manaway at yahoo.com. 
I met Katie a few weeks ago there in Hattiesburg uh, on the day before Ronald was going to, Ronald Phillips was going to have his funeral, was going to be funeralized rather, not have his funeral. But and there's just so many of us who are leaving here and we're not young as we used to be. And uh, I'd really like to talk to some of you if I could. So that's just for me. That's, that's just for me. So if you're there, holler back at me, let me know you're there. Our Bible study tonight uh, is going to be centered starting at verse 10 of Zechariah chapter 8. And I'll say just a few words as we get going to that. But again, each month I always try also to make sure that I, that I share Jesus Christ and salvation. And to just say to you, if you are not a Christian, if you have not personally privately, publicly invited Jesus Christ into your life, if you've not admitted to him that you are a sinner and that you need salvation and that you are willing to repent and to believe and to accept him as God's propitiation, God's gift of salvation, if you believe that God sent him in the world to die for your sins, so that you can have eternal life and not eternal uh, banishment. Uh, the words of John 3.16, perish, to be separated from God for eternity. But if you would just take a brief moment to just admit that, Lord, I am a sinner and I know I am. And I know that without you, I will spend eternity in hell and that's not what I want to do. So I humbly, personally invite you to come into my life I ask you to forgive me for my sins and to save me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for accepting me as I am. In your name, amen. You're just as saved as I am. And uh, I, I, that sounds so simple all the time. It's just, it, it just uh, Pastor Hampton, it, it just sounds so simple when you tell somebody all they got to do to be saved is just, uh, acknowledge, accept, believe, and confess. Isn't that something? And, and I like adding repent, though. You got to repent now. Well, you, you can, we all came as we are, but we all, we all not to be staying as we came. So, hey, I wish lightning would have flashed, thunder would have rolled, or something would have happened. But that's just all it takes to give your life to Christ, to walk out of darkness into the light. And I pray the night that you are now a member of God's family. Now, find a good Bible church. In wherever you are, find a Bible teaching church. Now, there's a lot of foolishness going on in the world, and sometimes you can find the greater foolishness at places we call churches. Find your word church somewhere in your community, somewhere where you can be consistently faithful and live out your commitment to Christ. So you can grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you do that, you can look forward to spending eternity with Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Eternal God, thank you tonight for giving us the privilege to share you with the world. And for those who are saying yes to you tonight, Lord, move upon them in such a unique, a unique manner. Let them feel your presence and know that you care. Use me and other pastors and church leaders to so encourage and be available to those who would accept you and live their lives under you. Equip us with all wisdom and knowledge that we may help them to be all they need to be and can be in you. And as we look into your word tonight, do open our ears and our hearts once again. For your glory, our good, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. To me, one of the most profound things that we said last week or a week or so ago was this line from verse 6, this, this teaching. And it was this. Uh, Reverend Dana, we said that the returning exiles from Babylon coming back to Jerusalem, according to what Zechariah and Zerubbabel uh, were experiencing during this marvelous time. The people were rebuilding their temple and recultivating their land. They were rebuilding their temple 
and recultivating their land. It was an exciting time to be alive. But if you think 500 BC was an exciting, just wait until the end of the age when Jesus Christ returns and does marvelous works. We haven't seen nothing yet. These people are excited about coming back out of captivity and rebuilding a temple. But y'all, we're talking about when Jesus comes back, it's gonna be for an eternity. Not just for a while, but for always. Well, as stated, these many of these verses in chapter eight begin with that reoccurring theme and the word of the Lord or the Lord of hosts see it. But here in verse 10, we get a different type of approach to the text. And let's see here. I want to share with us just for a while some things that we glean from this. And hopefully this will cover not just verse 10, but I also want to look at verse 11 to see what verse 11 has to say. Verse 11 starts off by saying, but now I will not treat the remnant. Can you see that? But now I will not treat the remnant. Wow, that's going to be powerful. So let's look into this. All right. So verse 10 says, For behold, these days these were, there were no wages for man or for any hired beast. There was no place from the enemy for whoever went out or came in. For I set all men, everyone against his neighbor. Next verse says, but now I will treat the remnant. Can you see that? That's verse 11, I believe. I will treat the remnant of this people as in the former days, says the Lord of hosts. For the sea shall be prosperous. The vine shall give its fruit. The ground shall give her increase. And the heavens shall give her due. I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these. Remember there was this little line a few verses ago where we said that we need to understand that God is not just a God that punished in the past, but he also is a God that will bless in the present and in the future. And no matter what the past had been like, that God has the ability to be a now God also. Keep in mind once again, and we stated then, and I want to state it one more time so we're always in context. It is not God who needed to change. It is not God who changed his mind. It is not God, God have mercy, who had to repent of anything. It was Israel then, it's us now, symbolically. From going from punishment and judgment of God, wrath of God, to going to now being in the blessings of God, as verses 10 and 11 show us. He says, there was a time I was against them. I came in against them, every man against his neighbor. It was just chaotic, verse 10. But then verse 11, he says, but now I will not treat the remnant of this people as in the former days. Wow. This is not difficult, Tab and friends. Let's see, what, to open your Bibles just for a moment to uh, Jeremiah 29. You know, all of us know Jeremiah 29 real well. We, we shout on it all the time in church. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. We, we, we love shouting on this. That's, just, we, that's where we'll start reading, all right? Um, am I at Jeremiah 29? Yeah, okay, here we go. Jeremiah 29, 11. Now, Zephaniah the priest read this letter in the hearing of Jerusalem of the prophet. Then the word of the Lord came, Jeremiah saying, Send to all the captives, saying thus, says the Lord, concerning um, those people, Shemathia and Nadilamite, because Shemathia was prophesied to you, and I have not sent him, and he has caused you to trust in a lie. Isn't there something? He's caused you to trust in a lie. Now look at, go back a little bit to verse 11. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. 
And I guess I just started reading at verse 10. But remember that latter part we just read. For this says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon. Okay, let's teach now. I will not treat you as I did in former days. There will be no peace from the enemy for whoever went out or came in, for I will set all men, everyone against his neighbor. But now I will not treat the remnant of this people as in the former days, says the Lord of hosts. For the seed shall prosper, the vine shall give fruit, the ground shall give increase, the heavens shall give her due. I will cause the remnant of this people to prosper in all these things. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Jeremiah 11, 29 and 10. After 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good words towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. For I will be found of you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. Just, just Bible. Here we are in Zechariah chapter 8, verse 10, and God is saying, look, I'm not lying. There was a time, yeah, y'all got on my nerve and I, I allowed captivity to come, but but that didn't stop me because I had a purpose. I had a plan for you. I promised you the land. I didn't, I didn't want y'all to have to leave here in the beginning, but you, your sins separated you from me. Your sins hardened your heart toward me. I didn't grow hard toward you. You grew cold towards me. I, I, I can't have that. I'm God. So for 70 years, I, I had to let you understand that what I was trying to get you to see, maybe this generation can see it now that you're back. So everything that I promised your fathers that they would experience in this place, God says now, even coming back, your temple, your house, your church facility may not be as glorious as it was, but at least you get just to observe and enjoy the promises of my pleasures. God would bless the prisoners who have returned to their land with prosperity. God will give them fertile fields, ripe grapes, dew, and rain. This was the case in Zechariah's day, and it also is the case for today. Modern Israel is a prosperous land, even in 2022, and with all of the trouble going on. God is faithful. Can somebody just say that to me? Say, God is faithful. Say that with me. Say, God is faithful. Write in the comment section, somebody, I am so glad God is faithful and God will do what God promised he will do. Boy, that is, that is solid. Look at your Bibles at uh, Zechariah chapter 8. And I think we're somewhere at verse 12 uh, so that we can see what's going on. We know we've read through verse, verse 11. Mm, and it shall come to pass. Wow. That's verse 13. Verse 13, it shall come to pass. Mm, that just shall do. So I stopped at verse 12, so I want to I go back and read Zechariah chapter 8, verse 12. For the sheep shall prophesy, the vine shall give its fruit, the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give her due and I will cause the remnant of the people to prosper at this place. And then verse 13, it reads, And I shall come, and it shall come to pass, not, not all, and it shall come to pass that just as we were a curse among the nations, 
O house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you when you shall be a blessing. Do not be fit, do not fear rather, and let your hands be strong, for thus says the Lord of hosts, just as I determined to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, says the Lord of hosts, and I would not relent. So again, in these days, I am determined, God Almighty, God says, I am determined to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Do not fear. Wow, that is powerful. Now, here it is, Tab. So in verse 13, God wants us to remember through the prophet Zechariah this truth. Remember the zeal of God that the city had towards Zion. You know, I'm zealous towards Zion. Remember how this whole thing stores off. Well, he, he says he'll bless them to the same degree, oh, that he punished them. He's going to bless them to the same degree that he punished them. Mm. Okay, come on, shout with me, somebody. Think about it. All those dry days, all of those hard times that you went through, all those times you felt forsaken, forgotten, alone, whatever the case may be, discouraged. Now God says to the same degree that you went through all of the bad, the, the, the trials, the struggling, God says now I'm going to bless you to the same degree of your punishment. <laughs> when I was a little boy, oh my mom, she was so sweet. I'm thinking about her these days. She would always, uh, I was bad. Let, let, let's, let's get the context right first. I, I probably deserved, not probably, I deserved every chastisement my mother gave me. I, I did. I earned it. <laughs> I did. I was that kind of child. I, I earned every, every bit of it. But mom was so sweet. I can remember always saying to me, after I got through crying and, and, and licking my wounds, so to speak, she would always say with an equal, small, little sweet voice, now wash your hands and come eat. Hmm. She never really got that loud when she was whipping me. I told you, baby, you, you're hard-headed. That, that's, that's about how I feel. How, how, how loud she got. You're going to listen to me one day. I'm telling you, baby, I'm trying to help you. I don't like doing this. Now wash your hands and, and come eat. She didn't throw the food on the place. It, was where, it, was, it wasn't half cooked. It was well organized. It wasn't cold. It was hot. To the same degree that she chastised me was the same degree that she blessed and cared and provided for me. Now, my earthly mama can do that, who was nowhere near being perfect. Why should I doubt a God where in him there is no shadow of turning? Dr. Heather Clark, I don't know why it's so hard for us to get this. God does not do anything half-hearted. How do we just determine we just gonna give God this much? This much singing, this much teaching, this much preaching, here it is, this much living, this much forgiving, this much enthusiasm, just half-heartedness. What if God had woke us up in the morning? What if God have let us breathe, have let us see, have let us hear, had let us have the use of our faculties, the use of our limbs, have let us walk? There is a divine zeal in God that we as human beings would never begin to understand and this zeal that God gives that we call intensity. God don't just love us. God doesn't just take care of us, but he does it with such intensity in both God's blessings 
All right, hold on. We're sitting down. I am and cursing. Oh, you can put the uh, let, well, you can use the first last word first. In our cursings and blessings, God is equal. In the same way God will chastise us, the same way God will bless us. In the same intensity, God will curse us. In the same intensity, God will use to bless us. In your Bibles, and uh, if you will, I think it's Deuteronomy. Chapter 28 or 27. Let's turn and see. Open your Bibles there real quick with me. And let's see if we can get this. Uh, these, these, these if but uh, chapters of uh, other, other scripture. Yeah. So uh, uh, Deuteronomy 27 and 28. Got it? Deuteronomy chapter 27, 28. I want you to read that just just read it and you will see what I'm talking about when you get there, all right? And I think the same thing happens in Leviticus, if I'm not mistaken. But if he, it is an animal, if a man dedicates not. Now, Deuteronomy, it's Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 27, Deuteronomy chapter 28. We call those the great if but chapters of the Bible. Got it? Uh, if you do this, if you do this, if you do this, I think chapter 27 to Deuteronomy covers, if you do this, curse it, 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 are you, curse it, curse it, curse it, are you. And then Deuteronomy 28, <laughs> in Deuteronomy chapter 28, then it's, and if you do this, bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it, bless is. So I just think it's something for you to add to understanding Zechariah chapter 8, verse 13. All right? And look at verse 14 and, and 15 in and, and those other areas here as we, my God, we're getting ready to come to the end of, uh, of this wonderful chapter here in just a moment. But the next section reads like this. Uh, these are the things you should do. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Are you, are you looking at me? He says, these are the things you should do. It's verse 16. Got it? These are the things you should do. Speak each man to, uh, speak each man the truth to his neighbor. Give judgment in your gates for truth, justice, peace. Let none of you think evil in your heart against your neighbor and do not love a false oath. For all these things I hate, says the Lord. Now notice what God hates. He hates lies. He hates injustice. He hates evil thoughts. Notice what he loves. He loves the truth. He loves fairness. And he loves good intentions. Wow. Wow. Let's go slow. This is verses 17 and 16 and 17. Got it? What God hates, he hates lies. He hates injustice. He hates evil thoughts. What does God love? God loves the truth. God loves fairness. And God loves good intentions. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop right here because when we get to August next month, in, uh, when, well, next week or so, um, I actually want us to do a little topical side road here in Chapter 8. And we're actually going to look at deeper what lies, injustice, and evil thoughts are. If God hates them, we ought to take time to <laughs> look at least look at them and see what God hates, right? Bible study. And if it says, notice what God loves, if God loves the truth, if God loves fairness, if God loves good intentions, then we need to know what God loves. So we're just going to take a little moment from and since we're in Bible study and if we don't get through any of the rest of the chapter, we're stopping at verse 17, getting ready to go to verse 18, and we're going to talk about the things God hates and the thing God loves. And I'm sure we'll get to Proverbs, that, that discussion about these six things do the Lord hate, just so we can get there and have some balance. 
I hope you've been blessed. This has been a blessing to me. The month of July has been very challenging for me. And I just want you to know I'm looking forward to getting to the month of August and seeing all of the wonderful and great things that the God is doing on our behalf. So continue to enjoy your summer. Continue to enjoy your vacations if you're going. And remember, love God. Love the now. And remember, God blesses just as intently and equally both cursing and blessing us. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for being faithful and true and being just in all your ways. We know about your blessings. Lord, may we be patient and endure as you love us equally with chastisement and with things that are not pleasant to us, but that you're doing those things and you're allowing them because you do love us. We appreciate you, and we thank God for your justice and your righteousness. Give us rest tonight for the rest of the week, and until we come together next week to look into your word again for truths and lessons to live thereby, help us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night, good day, and shalom.